Welcome, addicts. In this video, we are going to be discussing the fantasy outlook of none other than Tom Brady, TB12, heading to Tampa Bay in his age 43 season, jumping ship onto a ship, getting to play with Bruce Arians, playing for a championship. I'm done using the word ship now, I promise. Let's not waste any more time. We're going to get right into the video talking about Tom Brady in 2019, one of his worst statistical years in a long time. Passing yards just above 4,000 at 4,057, 24 to 8 touchdown interception, so still good in that regard, and three rushing touchdowns on 34 yards of rushing. Finished with 271.6 fantasy points, putting him at 18th at the position and finishing with an average of 17 fantasy points per game. But this this was done with arguably one of the worst talent cores he had around him in a long time. Julian Edelman there, yes, started the season out with Josh Gordon. He was quickly canned, had Antonio Brown for a single game, and boy, was that a glorious game playing against Miami. Started out looking really strong, and then everything just slowly started to, the wheels started to slowly fall off. Nikhil Harry missed most of the season. Julian Edelman, although playing very productively, was banged up towards the end of the season. No one else was really stepping forward. This is the first year that Brady didn't have Gronk in a very long time. Very ugly season for Brady, and you probably weren't happy with owning him in fantasy. He started the season out looking pretty hot, and then with the exception of Week 13, you really weren't ever happy starting him again uh, after Week 6. So where does that leave us now? Jumping from a really poor receiver core goes to Tampa Bay now has arguably the best wide receiver duo in Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. They convinced Gronk to come out of retirement trade for him. So now he has Robert Gronkowski and OJ Howard and Cameron Braid at tight end, huge upgrade over what he was doing with last year. And then they draft Tristan Werps shore of that offensive line and they add Keyshawn Vaughn to the running back core along with Ronald Jones and Daria Agumbawale. This team is making a push for an immediate title run and it makes sense because you don't go out and sign Tom Brady at age 43 if you don't expect to try to win a title this year. Now as it stands right now Bruce Arians is wanting this to remain his offense but I'm sure Brady will have an influence on it. They're talking about keeping this in 12 personnel, meaning they're wanting to run two tight ends as their base. And I don't really have many negatives to say about Tom Brady other than maybe what we saw last year wasn't solely due to his receiving weapons. Because when we have to start making that excuse for a quarterback, you always have to have that little nagging doubt in the back of your mind. It's like, yeah, but well... When Tom Brady was playing at the height of his talent, he was able to make do with whatever he had on offense. So can you really blame 100% of it on his cast or you have to throw some blame back at him? So that's really the only negative is how much juice does he have left heading into age 43? Now, a lot of people have used the argument that, oh, this is dead, you know, this is terrible for Mike Evans and Chris Godwin because, especially Mike Evans, because Tom Brady doesn't throw, throw the ball deep. So, well, actually he does because last year he threw 60 deep ball attempts that was fifth most in the entire NFL and his deep ball completion percentage was still top 10, finishing at 41.7% on the year that was number nine in the position. Now, his touchdown rate was abysmally low at 3.9%, which was 26th lowest. Compare that to Jameis Winston's touchdown rate last year on arguably the same offense, 5.3%. So we're expecting his touchdown rate to come up. Now, where we look a little bit further into the potential decline of Brady's play, true completion percentage was only 66%, which was really bad. That was 30th in the NFL, and his accuracy rating was 6.9, which was 25th. And surprisingly, you wouldn't expect this because the way that we talk about the receivers in New England, it I mean, they weren't good by any means, but they were creating target separation. They were actually sixth best in terms of target separation for the entire NFL. It's easy to just 
whitewash and paint over the 2019 season and say, oh, Brady wasn't in it. The players around him weren't that good. It's just a season to forget. And I still lean that direction, but the stats don't necessarily bear that out. So there is a chance that Brady is washed. And coming to Tampa Bay, this will end up in a hype train that crashes before it ever reaches the station. However, the upside is pretty insane. Where we haven't started out right now, and this is where we're expecting him to finish roughly, would put him at 4,500 passing yards, 30 passing touchdowns, and unlike Jameis Winston, only 12 interceptions. 34 rushing yards and one rushing touchdown might be able to hit a little bit more just due to his uh, signature bounce over the line score. We'll, we'll see if that trend continues. There's a lot of ambiguity to how this offense is going to look on an efficiency standpoint. We do expect their defense to be a little bit more efficient against the pass this year, but probably not too much so because they didn't do too much to address it in the offseason. But we do expect their offensive line to be better. Keyshawn Vaughn and Ronald Jones will compete for the the number one running back there, but this is going to be a pass first team for sure. Considering all the weapons that they have, this is one of the best, if not the best, surrounding talent of Brady's career. It's just sad that it's coming at age 43, and we'll see how much he's able to do with it. While we're projecting this is probably closer to his ceiling, It's really not because if he is able to flip the switch back and play like he was even just a few years ago with this team, good Lord, he could hit an incredible upside. He doesn't give you the running game volume, obviously, that you'll get with a lot of the other guys going ahead of him. But his touchdown upside, I mean, we're projecting him at 30. That might end up being modest. I mean, this could be a 35-plus touchdown season easily when you can when you have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and Robert Gronkowski all catching touchdowns. Cameron Bray isn't uh, stiff either, and you know there's going to be some passing volume with Daria Gumbawale and Keyshawn Vaughn as well. So I mean, there's definite upside in terms of passing touchdowns. If the defense isn't what it, we're chalking it up to be, there could be a lot more shootouts. This is the NFC South where shootouts are plenty. A lot of teams in the NFC South with not-so-stellar defenses and great offenses. So this could be a really, really fascinating year for the Buccaneers. And, I mean, it's hard to argue against Tom Brady at this point. Even looking at the stats from last year, you kind of just got to go by faith and say, hey, if I can get him cheap enough, it's worth the risk. The upside is there. And we could be seeing the Buccaneers make a significant playoff push with Tom Brady. If I had to put money on it, I'm not going to bet against him. Do I think that there's a definitely not a definite non-zero chance that he's completely washed and this will be a, a train wreck and a failed experiment? Of course. But that's always possible in the NFL. Do I think it's likely that that's the case? I don't. I don't think that he convinces Gronk to come out of retirement if he's washed. I don't think he creates the type of environment that he's been festering and you know willing to break the curfew laws to uh, make sure he can practice with his teammates this is going to be a really interesting story to monitor i'm i'm really looking forward to seeing what the buccaneers can do but from a fantasy lens really excited about the pass catching options in tampa bay but you can't be excited about them if you're not excited about the guy throwing them the ball Tom Brady, worth it where he's going in ADP right now. He's still getting drafted pretty late. We'll see as the summer goes on and more people get infused into the system. There might end up being a jump in ADP, taking him out of our targetable range. But if you can get him in the 8th, ninth, 10th rounds, I mean, it's worth a shot. Like going around the same places like Matt Ryan, I feel like they give you similar upside, but if Brady hits that absolute ceiling, you're going to be mad at yourself for not taking him. And if he if he duds in the first couple of weeks, you'll know, and you'll be able to, to stream quarterback for the rest of the year. So it's not a huge risk taking him where his ADP is currently. But anyway, that's, that's our take on Tom Brady. 
heading into 2020. If you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be doing more videos across the NFL, breaking down the fantasy outlook for the fantasy relevant players. And also check out our website, fantasyaddictionnetwork.com for an entire list of rankings that uh, would be updated all the way up to until the start of the regular season. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.